you could graph it, yeah. So if x is equal to 3y plus 5, and y is equal to, oh, so x is equal to 3 over 2y. Does it say to use a specific method? Substitution. substitution. So did it already did it already do the first step of substitution for you? Yeah, it isolated x. Where can you plug that in? Uh, right here. And what do you end up with? 3 over 2y is equal to 3y plus. Can someone tell me what I would do next if this was me? If I was doing this alone, what would I do to this? What would be my next step? Liv. Take out the fraction by doing what? I'd multiply by 2, and I'd get 3y equals 6y plus 10. Just multiply by 2. It's so you, just always you don't always have to, but I would do that in this case. The common denominator here is 2, because yeah. it's the only one. So if it was like 3 over... 7, just multiply yeah. by 7. Sure. Okay. So what do you get now? Negative 3y is equal to 10. So y is equal to negative 10 thirds. Once you get y is equal to negative 10 thirds, what do you have to do with that? You have to plug it in 2. Oh, look, you isolated x. So what does x equal? 3 over 2 times y. What's y? Negative 10 over 3. Does that simplify a little bit? It does. The 3's cancel. You're just with negative 10 over 2, so it's equal to what? Negative? So yeah, so what's the answer to what? Negative 5, comma. 10 over 3. The answer to the system would be, the solution to the system would be negative 5, comma, negative 10 over 3. That would be the answer to this system right there. Now, theoretically, if we had time, what would we do? Check. We'd check by plugging these this point into both and seeing if it worked. So in this one, it asks you to use uh, elimination. So in this case, what can you, let's just, is it already set up for you? Yeah. Yeah, if you add them together, what's negative 2x and 2x? Zero. Zero. Negative 3y and negative 5y. Negative, negative 2? Oh, it's just 2. It, sorry, it's not. That's a plus right there. It, there's a plus. My line went through it. So 3y minus 5y is negative 2y. And negative 16 plus 24 is? Is 8. So what's y equal to? Negative 4. What do you do once you get y is equal to negative 4? Plug it into either one. So I would go 2x minus 5 times negative 4. That's the second one. Equals 24. And what do I end up with? Um, let me get some more space here. Yep. I end up with 2x equals 24 minus 20. So 2x is equal to 4. So x is equal to? 2. Exactly. x is equal to 2. So you're not done. When you're, when you're done, you would write negative. So not negative. It would be 2 comma. And yes, you could check this by plugging that point in. Let's try 59. 59 is... Um, okay, what was your question about 59? Okay, the first, what is the first thing it asks you to do? Slope-intercept form. So what is that one in slope-intercept form? Y equals negative 3 over 7x plus... 14 over 7, right? And what's slope intercept form here? Um, I don't understand. Um, I can do this one out again. Did I do it wrong? To put it in slope intercept form, what do you need to do to both sides of this? Okay, I'll, I'll, I skipped too many steps. I'm sorry, my fault. What do you do first if you want to write that in slope intercept form, that first one? You subtract what? Yeah. So you get negative plus 14, correct? It's, that's what you say. Oh, is it, did I just write it down wrong? Yeah. Oh, 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 just say transcription error. Got it. Thank you. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> that would be a problem. That's the first thing I always check when I go over to a student's work, so I should check that on my own. So what do you end up with? Y is equal to negative, how, what's the slope? Negative 3 fourths x plus what? Four thirds? Oh, seven. And I just wrote that wrong again. Seven, seven, and seven. <laughs> and then what's this one going to be? Y is equal to negative six over 14. X plus three over 14. Can you simplify that one a little bit? 
you have y is equal to negative 3 over x plus 3 over 14. So you have that line and this line right there. It says write each equation in a slope intercept form. Okay, we did that and tell how many solutions. We talked about this yesterday. What can you tell me about these two lines? Lines. Someone raise their hand and tell me what you can say. Hannah, what are they? what can you tell me about them? Parallel. They are parallel. Why? Same slope. So if you're if you're solving for where they intersect, where do they intersect? Nowhere. So there are no solutions. Two lines that are parallel that aren't the same line. So two distinct lines that are parallel, they don't intersect, so there are no solutions. You can automatically tell that because the slope is the same and the y-intercept is different. If the slope and the y-intercept were the same, it would be the same line. How many solutions would there be? Infinite. All real numbers. Exactly. Put everything away except a pencil. Here's the fun thing we get to talk about. Systems of linear equations in three variables. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about lines. We're going to have lines that look like this. And what's the new thing that we have here? What's the new thing, Obs? Z is the new thing. Structurally, structurally, is anything going to change, really? Not really. We're going to add and subtract things from both sides of an equation. We're going to isolate. We're going to substitute. We're going to eliminate. The mechanisms are going to stay the same. If you have two equations and two variables, how many different ways do you have to solve two equations and two variables? How many ways do you have to solve a system of equations involving two equations and two variables? You have graphing, substitution, and elimination. elimination. So you have three. So if you have two equations and two variables, do you have lots of different do you have lots of different ways to attack the system? Yeah, you do. You could graph it, maybe it'll give you the answer. You could substitute, maybe it'll give you the answer. You could eliminate, maybe, maybe all three will work nicely. We're now going to have three equations and three variables, and one of those methods is not going to be practical. Which method isn't going to be practical yet? Graphing. Graphing, graphing three variables, graphing, graphing things, thing. I'll call it a thing now because I haven't labeled it. Graphing something like that is a little challenging because how many dimensions do you need? You need three. You need an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. We actually exist in that kind of dimension. We're in this room. There's a horizontal position, a vertical position, and forward and backwards. If you want to describe this point right here, is it enough to know where it is over the floor? No. How many points over this one point on the floor? If I put a red dot on the floor, how many points exist above that red dot? An infinite number. A lot of them, right? So if you want to locate a point in space, you need a horizontal position, a vertical position, and then a depth. You can call it different things. We are not graphing things in three dimensions in this class. What we're going to do, this entire section comes really boils down to this. You're going to take something that is three equations and three variables and turn it into two equations and two variables. Because if you have x and y, what can you solve for? If I know the value for x and y, can you solve for z? Try this right now. If x is 2 and y is 7, find me what z is. If x is 2 and y is 7, find me what z is. 2 and y is 7, find me what z is. Anybody get a z value they want to share? Connor, what'd you get? Who got 19 for z? Who got 19? No one else? Okay, let's try it. Uh, who got 20? I was like, I, I don't know if it's okay. 21. Who got 21? Nice. Okay, so do you believe me if you find x and y, can you find z? If I gave you y in z, could you find x? Yeah. Sure. If I gave you any two values, could you find the third? Yeah. yeah. So here's the deal. It's going to look really complicated. It's going to look all messy. But what we're really doing is we're taking something with three equations and three variables, turning it into two equations and two variables. And then do you have three different ways you could solve that? Mm -hmm. Solve it. And once you get two of them, can you find the third? Yes. Yes, you can. The reason we don't graph them is because they could look like this. Oh, no. When you graph, yeah. when you graph everybody, AX plus BY plus CZ equals D, where A, B, C, and D are real numbers. Here is, it, it, are these going to be lines? No. They're not, each of them is not going to be a line. What are they going to be? Each of them is going to be a plane. Each of them is going to be a plane. Is drawing a plane in three space easy? Not really. 
Guess what happens when you start warping them? It gets even crazier, right? We don't do warped planes. In this class, we're looking at planes. The problem is, is how many different ways can they intersect? Well, here's three planes. If all three planes are parallel, where do they intersect? Nowhere. Okay, if all three planes are not parallel, if no two planes are parallel, they intersect in a point. Hey, take a look at these three planes. There's one, two, three. Where do they intersect? Is that a point? Hey, this is a point. Oh, no. What is it? It's a line. It's a line. So, three planes, they can intersect in a point. They can intersect in a line. They can all be the same plane. Where do they intersect if they're all a plane? It's a plane. It's a plane, right? So, it could be a point. It could be a line. They can intersect in a plane. They could not intersect at all, right? Here, where do all three of these planes intersect? Where do all three of them intersect? Nowhere. Where do all three of these intersect? Nowhere. Nowhere. Where do these two? Nowhere. Are there many different ways for them not to all intersect? Yes. So doing that visually, is that really hard? Visually, it's really hard. It's kind of cool. So instead of doing it by hand, if we ever had to do this visually, what could we use? Calculator. Calcul uh, calculator or a circuit. There are great programs that will graph these for us, but in terms of finding exact points, is that going to be good? No, you have to like zoom in and like look. I mean, like here you go, ready? Estimate this point for me. You have to like look around. It's really hard. So instead, we're going to take three equations and three variables and press it into two equations and two variables. In your book, you're going to see lots of steps, like cases and steps. Like here are the steps that they would like you to follow. If you totally get lost, look at these steps, but only look at them if you get totally lost. It's a lot to remember, and I think it makes it seem harder than it actually is. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to look at one of these systems and kind of talk about it and figure out where to go with it. Here is a system we're going to try to solve. Here's a system we're going to try to solve. How many equations do you see, Nick? Three. How many variables do you see, Connor? Um, I see three. So theoretically, there is there could be a point where all three of these intersect. Now, if... I told you to solve this with substitution. You haven't done one of these before. We're trying it with substitution. What's the first thing you always do with substitution? Yeah? You pick a variable, you pick a variable in one of the equations. What are you going to do with that variable? You're going to... Isolate. So that first word is isolate. Is there a variable that looks like it's good to isolate? Z. I like Z in which one? I like Z in the first one. There's no coefficient. It's positive. You must work really neatly on these. Simple mistakes blow up the entire problem. So if I look at this first equation right here, if I want to solve this equation right there for z, so I have 4x plus 8y plus z equals 2. If I want to solve for z, what do I do first? If I want to isolate z, Milo, what should I do first if I want to isolate z? Subtract 4x. Yeah, so z is going to be 2 minus 4x minus 8y. So we know that z is equal to this. That's from our first equation. What was that second word? After isolate, what was that second word that we like to do? Once we've isolated, what do we do? One word. What do you do with what you've isolated? You plug it in. What's that word we like? Substitute. So we've isolated. We're going to substitute now. Where do we plug this in? We're going to plug it into both of these. Instead of z, what are we going to write? Instead of z, what are we going to write? 2 minus 4x minus 8y. Instead of z. Okay, everybody, hands up. No one write anything down. Okay, here we go. So instead of z, we're going to write, we have x plus 7y minus 3. But instead of z, what are we writing? 2 minus 4x minus 8y equals what? Uh, negative 14. And then we have to do it for the second one. 2x minus 3y plus 2 times. Instead of z, what am I writing? 4x minus 8y. And what does that equal? 3. Do this for me. You see those two equations? How many equations do you see in this purple box right here? How many variables? How many variables are there in that purple box? There are two variables and two equations. Two variables and two equations. Don't solve it. Clean those up for me. Simplify the top one and simplify the bottom one. Do that.
Who got that? Who got minus nine? So who got who got negative six x? Who got negative six x? Uh, anybody want to challenge thirteen y? Milo, what'd you get? Who got negative nineteen y? Ah, it seems like that's the case. Okay. So I want us to pause right here. Everybody pause. Do not work. Do not write. Just everybody pause. What is this? What is that? It's two linear equation. It is a system of linear equations. Do you know how to solve a system of two linear equations with two variables? Yes. So theoretically, you could use substitution. And when you were done, you're going to get a value for x, and you're going to get a value for y. Once you have a value for x and y, what can you find? It's a value for z. You're taking three by three systems, three equations, three variables, and turning it into two. And then you do the work we just did, get x and y. So if you did this out, if you did this out, what method would you guys like to use if you did this out right here? And yeah, I mean, substitution is what you guys like to default to, right? Ah, thank you. Are you liking elimination a little more now? It seems like you want to use substitution, kind of like the reason why I want to use slope intercept, because that's just what you've done, right? You're comfortable with what you've done. It's like people, when they drive home to their houses, they drive home the same way over and over again, even though there's a faster way, they're comfortable with it. It happens all the time. It's less probably like getting sloppy with fractions. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. If you if you were to attempt substitution on this, is it going to get kind of nasty? Yeah. It's not cool. I, I don't think it's very cool to use substitution on this. Could you if you wanted to? Could you graph it? <laughs> could you? Could you? Yeah. Yes. Would you want to? No, not really. Okay. So if we use the elimination on this, and we're relatively confident these are correct because we all seem to either agree on them or mostly agree. We need to come up with an opposite pair here, right? Now, are we gonna would you want to focus on the y's or the x's? Why would you want to focus on the x's? They're smaller. I mean, these are bigger than other numbers, but 31 and 19, those are both prime bit. Let's use these instead. So what are you gonna multiply the top one by? Uh, what do you want to multiply the top one by? Four. Four? Uh, well, really? How about we multiply it by six? Let's multiply it by six. Oh, wait, does four work? Does four give you a common? I think, wait, four times 13 is uh, 52. 52? It doesn't work. So multiply by six. If you multiply that by six, what's six times 13? Anybody know what six times 13 is? Uh, 78. 78. So you end up with? 78x. Uh, you have to do 6 times 31. It's 180 what? 186y minus what? Equals what? Negative what? 48. We multiplied everything by 6. What do you want to multiply the bottom one by? What should I multiply this one by? 13. Hey, what's 13 times negative 6? Negative 7. Oh, is that what we were looking for the entire time? Yeah. What's 13 times 19? Anybody want to know what 13 times 19 is? It's negative 19 times 13. So it's going to be negative what? Negative 247y is equal to? So what was the magical thing we just set up? If you add these together, what happens to the x's? They're gone. And now you have 186 minus 247y. What's negative 48 minus 13? Negative what? Negative 61. And what is 247 minus 186? 113, 179. Is it 59? Is it 59? Did I do that wrong? What is it? What is it? It is 61? Is this a really good sign when you get this? Is that a really good sign? Isn't it negative 61y? Oh, it's negative. Thank you. Ooh, that's really important. Is it really good when you do all this nasty work and you end up with a clean answer? That's a great sign. That's a great sign. OK, so if we have y, if we have y, what can we now solve for? x. So if we go back up here, take a look at what we have. We have two equations right here. You see, do we like the do we like the first? I'm looking at the gray ones in the middle. Do we like 13x plus 31y equals negative 8 or the other equation? Which one do you want to use? I like the bottom one. Why do you like the bottom one, Nick? 
it's slightly what? It's slightly smaller, right? I know. Thank you. Thank you for that. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Good catch. So now there's a negative here. Where do we plug that y in? For the, 19. For the y next to the negative 19, correct? So you have negative 6x minus 19 equals negative 1. So negative 6x is equal to what? What's negative 1 plus 19? 18. So what's x equal to? Negative 3. Negative 3. Oh, we have x and y. Now that we have x and y, where do we go? Which equation do you want to use? The first, second, or third? Might as well be the first. It seems like the smallest, nicest one. All the numbers are now feeling as though they're being discriminated against. Uh, what is x equal? Negative 3. What's y equal? What's z equal? Oh, we don't know yet. Oh, 1. I'm sorry. Thank you. Negative 12. Exactly. Plus 8 plus z is equal to 2. What's negative 8 plus 12? Negative 4 plus z is equal to 2. So what's z equal to? So what's our answer? What's our x value? Negative 3. What's our y value? What's our z value? 6. So you see how there's three numbers there? I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this to move. There it is. Here's your final answer. Here is your final answer. To sum up, we're starting with a 3x3 three three system. It looks really nasty, right? What do we turn it into? 2x2. Two, two. two equations and two variables. Do you have lots of ways to solve a 3x3? Two two? Yes. This one was a little nasty because we chose we chose to use linear, linear combination to use elimination right here. And yeah, is it possible to have to deal with bigger numbers? Yeah, are you always going to have bigger numbers like that? No, not always. I would I would try to give you ones maybe with smaller numbers so you wouldn't have to deal with this. But what was the first really good sign that we were doing the right one? What was the really good sign? We got Y equals 1. We went out to the woods. There were lots of big trees that were big and scary. But then we got to the outside and Y was equal to 1. That's a great sign. So once you get one of the variables, you go back up and you can get the second. And then once you have the second, you can get the third. You're taking a three by three system, turning it into a. So what are some tactics you have to take? Like, what did I remind you of? When you start working on these, you better work neatly. If you don't work neatly, what's going to happen? You're done, right? What happens if you miss a negative sign somewhere in the middle here? Done. Like, if you flip the negative here, all of a sudden, you it's, like, this was our saving grace, right? What happens if that was like 17 instead? Ooh, 61 over 17, two prime numbers. Plug 60, instead of plugging in one into here, we have to plug in 61 over 17. That's how you go in here, in here. Be careful. Be careful. Connor, yes. So we have z equals, so we have x equals negative 3 by 3 by 3. What was that first word? We isolate. So you have to pick. You have to pick a variable. Now, we isolated z. Do you have to isolate z? I see a variable that I think is the easiest to isolate. Which one do you think it is? X in the... I like x in the third because I can add and keep things. I, x in either the second or third is fine. I kind of like this one because when I add, I get positive and positive on the other side. So if it was me, if it was me, I would add and get x is equal to... 2y plus 4z plus or minus what? 5. What do you do? What's that second word? Isolate and then what? Substitute. Isolate and then substitute. Where do you substitute this equation? And the? You substitute it into both. And where do you put it? X and x. Once you substitute... Once you substitute, what do you end up with? We no longer have three equations, we would have two equations. And it would be in terms of y and, because instead of x, we would have something in terms of y and z. So you plug in, would you have to simplify a little bit? Are there going to be some like terms you have to combine? Yeah, absolutely. So you isolate, substitute, and then you get two by two. Have you practiced two by two equations, solving them a lot? Yeah. So you have to get back to what you know and then do what you know. This is the only new thing. Do you have to solve for a z? No. Could you solve for x instead at first? Yes, absolutely. Okay, your homework tonight 